Hi, this is your host, Sapan Bhartia, and welcome to TFR. Let's talk. And today we have with us Suresh Vittal, Chief Product Officer at Alterx. Suresh, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here with you, Swapna. Perfect. Since this is the first time we are talking, I would love to hear a bit more about the company. Tell us, what do you folks do? Yeah, Alteryx is um, the, an analytics automation platform. I think of it as the best analytics automation platform on the planet. We help uh, business users, knowledge workers across enterprise, small and mid-sized companies and individuals to be able to make the most out of their data, whether the data sits in Excel files, whether the data sits in customer databases, in cloud applications or in cloud warehouses. Uh, we help our customers make sense of the data each and every day uh, by giving them access to uh, 200 plus low code tools that allow them to do complex uh, analytics tasks, um, allows them to do complicated machine learning models, um, helps them build um, analytical workflows um, and create insights and create uh, uh, new capabilities within the organization. Uh, do you folks like target specific industries or it doesn't really matter? You know, anybody and everybody has to wrestle with data today. Uh, if you're in an enterprise and if you have customers, uh, your customers may be consumers, your customers may be other businesses, you have a data challenge, your data is fragmented, it's across multiple systems. Um, and as the, as the business owner or the business analyst, um, you're responsible for helping make sense of all that data and translate that in insights and help your business convert that into actions. Um, and Alteryx is uh, where it all starts. What kind of major trends that you are seeing in this space recently? Of course, first of all, uh, there is a lot of you know, movement happening towards cloud. Uh, COVID also created a different need and you know, rush towards cloud. Uh, everything is AI, ML driven. So talk about what are you seeing there? Yeah, Swapna, that's a great question. Um, so, you know, the big, one of the big trends we are seeing is the variety and velocity uh, and fragmentation of data is only increasing, right? Um, think about an average company. Uh, they probably have Salesforce. They have ServiceNow for service tickets. They're probably using, you know, Excel um, or customer, or they have a, a customer database or a supplier database. Um, so these companies, these teams are really seeing a lot of data come at them, especially as experiences are becoming digital you're able to capture the digital footprint of every single experience. Um, and then you want to kind of translate that, understand that and apply that to drive your business. Um, and so that's one big trend, the volume, variety, velocity of the data is only going up, right? Another big trend we are seeing is every knowledge worker inside the business requ is required to be able to handle data and handle analytics, right? Data has become really the secret weapon um, to help businesses stay competitive in this digital transformation that they're all going through. So that's a trend. We're seeing more and more demands for use cases and applications of that data. That's only going up as well, right? You brought up a great point. Um, I think the application of AI and ML in every company is becoming more in demand. That means, you know, one of the trends we're seeing is the data scientists uh, they're in high demand. They don't always have time to serve all the needs of the enterprise, and that's hard, right? And so what we're seeing is the need for more self-service analytics, more self-service insights, uh, more self-service data science capabilities um, across the enterprise. These are, these are at least three trends that we see over and over again, uh, three or four trends that we see over and over again. And this also kind of leads to another interesting point, which is we are already seeing in tech space, there's a shortage or there's a gap of supply and demand of talented folks who understand that. And when you talk about data scientists, they are already, you know, <laughs> a kind of a, a species which is very hard to find. And then there's a spike in usage. Now, uh, in the early days, we used to say, you know, every company, you should have a software division, otherwise you cannot survive. Now every company has to have a cloud strategy. Now soon uh, you have to have AI ML strategy also. Plus, uh, which, I mean, first of all, when you look at hyperscale like Amazon, they suck by all the talented folks that come into the industry. And then you have small folks who also want to run their business. So when you talk about velocity and volume, when you also talk about that everybody is moving towards that, which also create a totally unique challenge 
uh, where people are trying to solve different problems, but there are not enough folks there. Also, some of these technologies, cloud technologies, are so new that people barely know them for just let alone that they are expert. So how do you look at some of the big challenges also that are there with this growing trend? I love that you asked the question first thing swap now, because this is really a human and a skills problem inside the enterprise. Um, and I think you pinpointed on something super important. Uh, data science used to be thought of as let's find a massive problem with lots of data and then we'll do a big bang approach and there'll be a lot of services tied to it and we'll create one master model and that's going to you know, solve all the problems. Uh, but the reality is ex exactly what you described, right? The data scientists are way much in demand and you don't have the time to help the business. The people who understand the data, the people who can actually help build the best model are the analysts and the people running the business, right? What if you could bring the power of data science to each and every one of these analysts and these individuals? We at Alterings are super passionate about that. We call this upskilling the enterprise, right? And bringing kind of democratizing data and insights inside the enterprise. And the only way you can do that is if you can empower every analyst inside the enterprise every knowledge worker to be able to apply data science, apply machine learning, apply complex advanced analytics capabilities in their everyday tasks, in their everyday functions. And that's exactly what we uh, subscribe to. And we think if we can do that, if we can make data science capable across the organization, every individual capable across the organization, and they are using data science in every aspect of the job, the productivity and the insights is only going to go up. We talked about some like kind of broader trends. We talked about some problem area. We also not not essentially uh, the solution area, but let's also see what is Alteryx doing, you know, to help. Uh, we talked about some problems, you know, what are you folks doing? Because you recently also announced Analytics Cloud. Uh, you also acquired, you know, a, a company earlier, uh, Trifecta. So let's talk about the movements that are happening within Alteryx to help the ecosystem solve some of these problems. Yeah, uh, thank you for asking that. You know, so Alteryx has been a much beloved product inside the enterprise for the last 15, 20 years. Um, analysts everywhere have used Alteryx to kind of make complex data uh, analytics simple. Um, and so we kind of, as we looked at our product strategy and our company strategy, we see real value in helping uh, democratize analytics, make the power of Alteryx available, not just to uh, the power user or the knowledge worker, but to every person, every casual user should, should have the benefit of the power of Alteryx in the organization. So we kind of, what we did was we took our designer desktop and server products and we kind of embarked on this cloud journey um, and we got our, these capabilities available in the cloud for our customers, uh, but we didn't stop there, right? We said, look, data engineering is becoming a bigger challenge inside the company. As company data is moving to cloud warehouses, you need to be able to leverage those cloud native systems. You talked about the hyperscalers, right? You need to be able to leverage those hyperscalers to be able to drive more analytics and more value out of your investments. Um, so we acquired a company called Trifacta, which helps kind of accelerate our cloud journey. It's kind of has built-in tools that are native to the different cloud platforms, Google, Google BigQuery, Amazon Redshift, Snowflake, Azure Data Lake and, and so on and so forth. And so we think that's going to be really important in, when, in how we help companies kind of democratize this analytics capabilities. Um, then uh, we didn't stop there, right? We said, uh, we also want to kind of bring more cloud capabilities, more innovation and really unlock innovation for our customers. Um, so we've brought in a product called Alteryx Machine Learning. And what Alteryx Machine Learning does is it makes, the point I was making earlier, it makes it easier for the knowledge worker to embrace analytics, advanced analytics like AI and ML, like auto, auto modeling capabilities, uh, and then test that, learn from that, and see if they want to deploy that into production, right? But you need to give them a structured environment to do that. You need to give them governance to do that. You need to be able to help them operationalize that stuff. And we brought all of these capabilities into our Alteryx machine learning product. Uh, we also acquired a company called um, Hyperana, which became Alteryx Auto Insights. And we think there's real power if we can take Hyperana and put it in the hands of every knowledge worker, every business owner, who, people who are not familiar with the data can ask questions of Alteryx Auto Insights in plain English and get the responses sent back to them. 
we have an, a world-class AI system that is scouring the data, scanning, creating insights, insights that aren't apparent to the analysts and surfacing them uh, to the business owners. And we think there's a lot of power in that story as well. And so we've been really busy this past year in bringing a lot of this innovation. And this year we are on the journey of just helping our customers adopt and embrace and get value out of these products. One more thing that I want to talk to you about is cultural changes. Whenever we talk about these technologies, of course there are solutions, but you also need cultural change within organizations. So when we look at, you know, purely this space, you know, analytics space, uh, how much you see that as you were talking about trends, you know, adoption is growing, how much are you seeing the, the cultural changes are also happening where teams are prepared, you know, and they do understand the value and importance, you know, it's not forced from, you know, top-down management, uh, or in other way, how are you kind of becoming a catalyst to that cultural, ch cultural change through your tools? Swapnil, you are really locked onto the zeitgeist of, the, of these analytical issues. Um, I appreciate these questions um, so much. Um, I, I think, you know, this cultural journey around democratization of analytics is as much about, it is about technology and upskilling that I talked about, as it is about shifting the culture to be data first and insight driven um, inside the organization. Now this, this will happen in a few different stages, right? And really to help our customers, what we've done is we've created this analytics assessment uh, toolkit, which really helps an organization, helps an individual assess where they are on the analytics journey. Are they, do they have the right technical skills? Do they have the right, the right AI and ML skills? Um, do they have advanced um, analysts inside the organization? Do they have a company that's responsive to data and insights and change? Um, how should they structure it? Do, should they centralize insights? Should they decentralize insights? How do they support a self-service center of excellence? So we, we kind of, over the past 20 years, we've been helping our customers. You know, we have almost 8,000 customers. We've been helping these customers kind of democratize analytics inside the organization because we truly believe it has to be for everyone, right? But accompanying that needs to be the cultural change. So we work with our partners, companies like uh, PwC and KPMG who are with these customers day in, day out. Uh, but we were also bringing these tools, um, these assessment capabilities and making them available through our customer success organization, through our support organization, through our services organization. We're making it available to our customers so they can assess where they are in the journey and some of the changes that they need to make to kind of continue to embrace analytics. So it's a profound question. Um, it goes beyond technology. And frankly, it requires the organization to kind of come together um, to embrace analytics. Right, and when we talk about going beyond uh, technology, we start talking about people. We also talk about you know bringing people together, and that's where you know events and conferences play a big role. And you folks are going to organize, you know, inspire. So tell us about that event, uh, the format of the event, what people should expect there. Yeah, so um, we're excited. You know, uh, Alteryx has this amazing community of several hundred thousand. Alteryx users. These are users who are probably using Alteryx for the first time, and they're coming to our community to learn more. Uh, but these are also our aces. These are our super powered users uh, who contribute so much time and attention to the community. And for that, we are very grateful. Um, and we arrange, we organize Inspire um, every year, uh, which, is a, which is truly an inspirational event to bring the Alteryx community together to share best practices, share insights, share customer stories. Uh, last year when I talked about it, it was my first Inspire. I was blown away. We did it only online. Um, and there were tens of thousands of uh, um, community members joining us online um, and sharing their best practices and their capabilities. This year, we're doing it uh, in person. Uh, because we think there's real value in bringing people together in person. We also have a virtual track. So for those people who are unable to travel or don't want to, uh, we'll deliver this content in a virtual setting as well. Uh, we have you know, hundreds of case studies. Uh, we'll be giving awards to our customers, recognizing them for their pioneering activity in analytics. Um, and uh, we'll have some great keynote speakers and some great presenters throughout the three days of the conference. The conference is being held in Denver, uh, May 16th to May 18th. Um, and Swapnil, I hope you'll be there and, and many of your listeners will join us there as well. 
Suresh, thank you so much for taking time out today. And, you know, of course, talk about the company, but, you know, more importantly, the, the lessons and the other things that we learn more about, you know, how uh, this whole uh, world is changing around us and the role that you folks are playing there. So thanks for those insights. And of course, you know, uh, we'd we'll love to attend the event as well. And I would love to have you back on the show again. Thank you. Invite me anytime, Swapna. It was great, great catching up with you.